um, uh, scalability of your uh, system. So let's talk about the master slave uh, design, right? If you want to make it is a highly available, so how you will do it? So first, master slave. So what happens in the master slave, right? So you have a client here, right? And it reads or writes, right? Uh, it needs to read or write to a database. So first what you do is for all the writes or reads, you basically, uh, you can use one dedicated system as master. And what you do is you connect this particular, you replicate the data to other nodes as well. And you tell them as a slave. And any read anything comes from the client. So, so what happens is the rights will always go to the master. So whatever rights you do, there will be only one single node where we will be doing a write. Okay. So you will be responsible for, uh, I mean, this particular node will be responsible for taking all the rights. So whenever you do update, you do insert, you do delete all these three operations where the data changes from where the data mutation takes place will be uh, done by the master. And then there will be a replication job. Uh, it's not like you have to write it. The SQL already comes with that configuration and you can create a MySQL cluster in your own local system as well. Once you learn the Docker containers and that is why I'll just uh, take one session on Docker containers. You can create a, a particular MySQL cluster in your local system itself. And we can try it. I can share show the documentation to create that. And so you can create one and then you can designate that particular one of the node as a master. And you, so when you designate as a master, when you try to create something, it will always end up in the master node. Master node will do all the updates and everything. And then it will replicate. It will basically send the data change, delta change to the slave nodes. And any of the read nodes, I mean, uh, any of the reads, whatever the read comes in, it will always go to the slave. Okay, these slaves will never be, uh, you know, honoring any of the right requests. If you do right request, it'll reject it. Okay, so it will be not responsible for doing a right. It will be just, you know, doing the read. Now, what will happen is what actually you are achieving here. You are achieving one thing here. Okay, this is like a partial availability right now. Why I'm saying partial availability is because what will happen is what in this case, suppose your master dies, you can still, your cluster will still be functional as a read. You can still go ahead with the read, even though your write fails, but you are still achieve some of the partial uh, operation, uh, operability where you can still go ahead and do the read. Okay. Now there is one more challenge which comes with this is that what if, you know, this dies and it's not recoverable or something, you might have to promote the uh, one of the um, uh, slave as a master node, right? I mean, if it's a just a flip of this, it will restart and again, it will come back and again, designate itself as a master. But what if it completely goes out of the sink and it takes some time to or that, right? So in that case, you have to bring up the rights operation. You can't delay, uh, you know, much longer. So what you can do is in order to achieve the faster response that okay, your rights should not be, uh, you know, down for longer time, you will have to promote any of these nodes as a right. And these logics must be handled uh, by you, right? I mean, it is not something like, you know, uh, which is there out of the box because it's you who will be choosing and it's you who will be deciding what will be the, which slave will be uh, responsible for the uh, master. And then, you know, once suppose this gets start designated as a master, then all the rights, it will start taking in and this will become its slave. So that's why you might need to, have a three node or five node or seven node of uh, uh, MySQL cluster. Okay. Any any question on this, guys? Like, how do we achieve the scalability using I mean, for my uh, MySQL or any SQL based? Divakar, one question here. Uh, so the replication hmm. which happens to the slaves. Uh, so there would be a delay, right? I mean, the, so the consistency wouldn't be. Uh, so strong as what we saw in the earlier case, um, right? So, 
So in short, the right, right operation will be costly. Correct? Uh, just give me a second, guys. I think I've actually voice is breaking. Let me. So I have also question, uh, one question that how many mas uh, slaves we can attach with one master? So it, it, it depends on, uh, so what happens is, right, it depends on the configuration. So gender, generally the concept follows is, uh, if you are going with one, uh, I'll come back to your question, Alita. And, uh, so because, so it, it is not like a confirmed uh, by MySQL, we have to check the documentation. But, uh, generally the combination which follows is like, you know, one plus two structure, where you'll have one master, two slaves. Uh, if you have two masters, you can go with uh, four or six slaves. Why I'm telling you is, suppose suppose you use something like a zookeeper. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk about zookeeper. I mean, it's a pretty interesting uh, thing which uh, used in synchronization and coordination uh, thing. We already talked about, but we'll talk about in deep later. So if you decide that, okay, you know, you are going to use something like a leader follower concept that, okay, leader will be the master node you will always have to have the odd number of nodes remaining, right? So why I'm telling is that if you have like one plus two, you'll all have, uh, always have three and you can decide who, who will be the master. In this two concept also, you can have, you know, basically uh, if one of the uh, nodes, you, so one, one master you keep out on standby, one will be active. And um, so one plus four or one plus six will always give you the odd numbers and that you'll always be able to decide who is going to be the uh, leader. So there is no hard and fast rule. There will be a maximum limit for sure. Reason being is the replication is the factor here. And we have seen that there is a challenge in the replication as well. If there, be, there, is, there are many two rights starts popping up, the MySQL or uh, the Postgres clusters starts uh, you know, behaving weirdly. And the question uh, which was asked by Lalita, right, that uh, there will be a delay. Yes, there will be a delay. And we had seen that uh, you, you know, uh, we, we have written something here and we are expecting that to get from the read uh, slave node and we were not getting that information because of the delay in the uh, replication. And that is a problem because uh, SQL cannot scale after some you know, uh, uh, certain limit, like there will be a problem with that and you, you cannot achieve that kind of a highly uh, available and strong consistency if you're going with the multiple nodes. So multi-node, multi these are the risks which uh, you have to, you know, uh, get it with. So the, the way we do is uh, you start setting the uh, delay factor. So there is a tolerance level that you can say, hey, if my replication, uh, replication delay is uh, uh, less than a second, it's fine. If it is crosses more than a second, which means if one data has been written here, if it doesn't appear here within the less than a second, then uh, you know you flag an alert to us and we'll be start investigating the DevOps or SRA team will start investigating that problem that why there is a delay with you know, how we can uh, you know recover from that and they basically need to take care of that. Okay, so that will be the challenge. That is the challenge which we, and that is why I'm, uh, the no, whole no SQL has come in place that how you can make it more less uh, available, this thing. One more question, Divakar. So here, if we have uh, chosen this two master uh, configuration, so that could be a case, right? Instead of one master node, we can have uh, multiple uh, master nodes, right? Uh, that's what I told, right? So you can have one master node, two slaves, two master node, four slaves, or six slaves. These are the configuration. If you see any of the organization, right? I mean, I, I'm not sure whether you guys uh, have used it, MySQL in enterprise applications, like you know, big or companies. You will see the configurations like this and they keep it on standby that okay there will be two uh, master nodes and uh, there will be four or six combinations so you can achieve that way as well yes okay if it is two master nodes it means that uh, the right should be actually uh, be committed to both the master nodes and only we will uh, say that the transaction is committed right ah that's the catch yes now that that catch will be addressing it in that way right so when you maintain two master, then there will be a problem, okay? The syncing problem will be there. The data integrity challenges will come. So the way you should be doing is, along with this, you should be following, I'm rubbing this now, guys, okay? 
along with this you should be using something called the database sharding now i am coming to that okay so the way you should be doing is if there are two writes nodes or do two masters node you are doing you should follow something like a database sharding this is another concept where what we do is we suppose maintain two master databases right so okay so what you do is uh, and these are the slave nodes okay okay so slave node so what do we do is you categorize uh, so what database sharding means okay so in order to reduce the load uh, you know um, you know basically like one system is hand one database is handling all kind of traffic what we are trying to do is we are we are trying to distribute the load between the two machines okay so what we will do is suppose okay uh, you know uh, the uh, you know the it is a registration data or it is some uh, organizational data so what do you say that okay uh, username uh, which starts from a to uh, like maybe jkl or m a to m will be in db1 and user m to z will be in db2 okay so what will happen in this case right so whatever information we try to update read play with that right this will all uh, if it starts with a to m we will be heading to the db1 we'll do write read and all that and whatever the information comes in the uh, m to z we will be writing into the db2 right so this way we are going to do the separation of the concern that okay fine all the data will be there and you are basically distributing the load in fact the db sharding i have seen it goes till 7 to 10 or sometimes 20 to 30 nodes as well depending on the traffic and i have i have seen that you know enterprise applications uh, they are using uh, sharding till uh, 7 to 10 they use sharding on the organization id if it is a multi tenant databases uh, they use their multi tenant id what tenant it is suppose you know you are in a uh, cloud company so you will create a separate db for one particular user and uh, another separate db database instance completely for that multi tenant and that way you can separate that one and then again for this you will have these things as a slave node uh, and when the read comes in a particular user you can redirect to this read either can be a common or you can do a separate one that doesn't uh, create a problem you can have read both the flavors but write is something you can separate in this way which is called the database sharding so in the configuration of database sharding do we mention the table and the column name also so the sharding works by your so this particular logic uh, so database doesn't have to worry about anything right there is a database which are coming with that uh, you know mongodb Uh, a few there are a few other databases which comes with the uh, direct support of uh, sharding uh, basically you can uh, provide the sharding key so if you see the mongo db and all that you can basically add that configuration and details in the query itself and it will take care of that database sharding but in case of mysql and all that it's you who has to take the decision uh, based on that so you, what you need to do is you need to basically extract the uh, user information see what it starts with and then based based on that it will connect to that particular database so it's you who will have to handle this logic okay so here in the slave also will be specific to the master i am sorry sindhi can you explain it so, more i didn't get it uh, so for example you mentioned the tenant wise master will be there right so this